So we're here on behalf of the Weekly Dig. Uh, we're interviewing City Council candidate Angelina Camacho. Angelina, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Uh, we have two questions for you about the Boston Public Schools. We'd like you to answer uh, for us. The first is, what do you believe is the current state of the Boston Public Schools? Uh, what grade would you give them now, and what grade would you give them four years ago when our current administration started? I think we are in a very challenging time right now. I would still say that we are a C average, um, not because the schools are necessarily bad, but they haven't really progressed the way they should be so that we could do better. And there are a lot of strengths, but for every bright spot, there are a few dark corners that we cannot ignore. Um, as it relates to our dear mayor, I'm a little bit challenged with comparing exactly are we necessarily better since he's taken on the administration because there's a lot of these things that have really impacted our school system since well before four years ago. For instance, when I was back at Boston Latin back in 1993, and I don't mind dating myself, it's okay. <laughs> I'm still pretty young, don't let the gray hair I'm still you. older than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, racism existed then, and there were a number of issues that contributed to that environment. But back then, we didn't have the term resilience as our banner. All that we had was the village. And that village is what sustained the wolf pack, you know, through all of the ebbs and flows of the barriers that came up against us as people of color and culture. And that really came even before 1993 because we had only dialed down the racial desegregation issues down to a low simmer from the desegregation time of 1974 and the mid 70s, as you know. And when you haven't really dealt with something, it's still going to come up to the surface, uh, surface, excuse me. And then you add the complexities of what our communities of color and culture look like now with our new Bostonians, which add a layer between our new Bostonians, our immigrant families like myself, and the legacy residents who were part of the communities of color and culture that didn't have parity back then. You add all of those mixed in and the situation's different. So you can't really say, can Mayor Walsh make it better? We have to attack what we didn't address back then. Also back then, around that time, we were also addressing the other issue around, uh, that actually surpassed race, economics. Um, poverty really affected so many of our students, and even now we have a very high percentage of low-income families that still need to be taught and still need to have access to quality education. Except when Governor Weld was moving forward that legislation, the money that was pumping in to the to the economy for uh, or the state budget at that time rather for improved access also included what we know now as privatization. And so privatization is now still a challenge that we're buckling with, buckling against. You know, we're just, we're moving a notch here, we're pulling a notch there, but we're not really making the dress to fit the mannequin, if you will. And so, uh, and so it's something that we really need to address. And when you look at all of those factors, it really impacts so much of our school right now. Right now we have even our own teachers who are fighting for a fair contract and we're fighting for the same rate increases as our public safety officers when we shouldn't even be having that fight because, simply because the teachers, just like our public safety officers, are our first line of defense, except they're working with our future. and. That ties into the other issue is, as the former co-chair, or the former Latino co-chair of the Citywide Parent Council, I have been charging the administration through the BPS system for at least three years about one main question. How much does it really cost for quality education? And if we don't have that number, we really can't argue about things like per pupil funding. We invest 21,000, nearly 22,000 per child as of last year, 
But do we know if that's enough? Until we can answer that question, we really can't fight with the teachers union about them earning too much or too little because there's no real cost on the investment that we should have in our children, especially when we talk about our early educators who are fighting just for pay equity and paid sick leave, something that I've been working on for all of our residents in the Commonwealth since the early 2000s. So there are a lot of complexities that impact our system that we really need to focus on making better. And one of the things that I hope to do is really focus on the BPS model, the power of we, because it's going to take all of us to fix it. I plan on continuing to do the work that I have done in leadership as a parent advocate to really work with empowering parents as not only their own advocates, but also within the public system and other systems so that we can cut through the red tape and really focus on our children and make sure that the school system is responsible for not just maintaining the Judge Garrity order, but doing more than that to make sure that our parents are fulfilling their roles as the first teacher in the homes. We can't expect our educators to do what they do unless we can support them when we get home. Um, and, you know, as our students, as our parents, we need to make sure that that environment is a healthy one for success. It's the reason why I also plan on working with community stakeholders to do what I've been blessed to do through my um, agency, the YAY program, a Youth Engaged in Action, where we create with local partners and business institutions an out-of-school opportunity for over 180 youth, where they learn about financial literacy and civics, during the summer, but they're guaranteed a summer job the next summer. And so we're not only giving them foundational skills that they don't get within the existing system, but we're also putting them into the economic pipeline for success with the tools to know what that means. And as a daughter of, you know, um, as Im of immigrant parents who had a young start of opportunity where new wealth actually turned into old poverty simply because they didn't have the skills like that, like we offer through the YAY program, I know how important it is and how it can be such a life changer for our youth. And we really need to start not making life changing opportunities for our youth, but also figure out how that ties into the family. How can we work with business partners and our community partners to really wrap around all of our families? Because the argument is no longer about black and white, but about all. And whether you're a new Bostonian or whether you're a legacy resident, wherever you are in that spectrum, all means all, and we need to make sure that every family can be part of a competitive, accountable, but public first quality education system. Okay, that's great, thank you very much. Um, so my second question to follow up is, what specifically are you going to do as city councilor to improve the Boston schools? Mm -hmm. How many schools are you gonna visit in your two year term? What programs would you add or subtract and following up on your point earlier, how much money do you think the schools need to provide that quality education? Thank you. Essentially, I'm gonna to go to the, the latter part of that question. How much do we need? We don't know. We really don't know at this point. Um, we know there are a few things that we do know. We know that for this 22,000 per child, the money's not following the child. We know that um, we know that we are really focused too much on the wrong end of the question. We focus on the budget, how much should, you know, how much is in the budget to parcel out, and how much should we figure um, figure out um, within the facilities to build BPS. But again, we're talking from the place of scarcity, and we're not really identifying the place of opportunity. And I know that because as one of the leaders in parent advocacy. The parents have not completely chimed in on what they want to see for their students. The employer market has given some feedback, but hasn't given a full profile of what they really want to see their workers, to, you know, to be um, their workers to be when they come out of this education system. Um, the universities have not really 
come to the table properly to then pick up once we leave the K through 12 system and make sure that our residents, especially the local ones in my district, are being properly educated as a repayment for the footprint that they're taking in our district. So there's a number of things that we have not actually brought to the table to have a comprehensive focus on what it would actually cost and what resources are available to defray the cost beyond the budget. We are making some headway in regards to um, Dr. McCreary, who is now working on BPS partnerships, which is something that I've been doing and a number of parents have been doing on a very smaller, on a very small scale. So I intend on supporting that kind of work as well, because beyond the budget, we need the entire community to contribute. Um, just last year alone, I worked with a local bank in the South End community to run a month-long school drive, um, and also we, um, the Coolidge Corner community, and we contributed all of the school supplies that the entire third grade needed at one of our local elementary schools, and then also one of our public charter schools over in Alston Brighton. And so that makes a difference because not everyone's going to get to the local community drives where you can get some of your supplies. We actually started with all of the supplies that our young people needed, the entire list that the teachers um, provided. So that way it supported the teachers who didn't have to come out of pocket for the students who didn't have, and additionally, you, the teachers not only did not have to come out of pocket, but they were ready with a class that had everything they needed to start learning from day one. So my focus is to work on expanding on the work that I've done as a parent and supporting the work that BPS is doing on engaging partnerships. Um, also, I, may, I want to make sure that we, again, add the power of the parent because when we're talking about who we are today and focusing on all of our needs, we really don't focus on the real issues of transnationalism. What does it take to educate a student for whom Boston is not their first home? Not only in the classroom, but the environmental aspects of their culture that triggers that triggers issues within the classroom. I was at a conference just last, uh, last um, winter where we talked about even the most basic issues of someone who came over to Boston and didn't know how to walk upstairs. Where are the supports for that? But also, where do we not necessarily build programs that cost more for our budget, but really utilize the social assets that we have in the community to build things that don't cost us anymore, but reap such a return on our investment of time that it's invaluable. Additionally, I really just want to focus on bridging the gap between what privatization really means for our system. We don't need to privatize, we need to unify. And we need to make sure that our charter system, as it is and was part of us at one point, um, is actually being used in the way that it's intended to create innovation for the purpose of replication. We should not be fighting against one another, we should, be, we should find a way to make both systems work for all of our children because it started with us and it should be controlled by us. Our teachers union should be our first line of defense when it comes to education matters, but when it comes to innovation, it really should be all of us who have the bright ideas and the ability to test them as long as it's not at the detriment of our public school system. Because where only a few of our children may have the opportunity to experience this innovation, all of our children have to go through the gateway of public education. And those are the things I will work on as the next city councilor if I was honored with the election. Great. Um, just to follow up on my question, how many schools would you visit in your two-year term? Oh my word. Uh, within the two-year term, forgive me if I didn't visit all of them. <laughs> we have 57,000 students, but only so many schools. And um, I would, even, even if I didn't go directly to all of them, I would find a way to engage with all of them at some point. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, best of luck in your race. Thank you. I appreciate it.